redirecting and okay we should be live hi everybody okay so I'm, kim i'm gonna let you monitor facebook right now since i'm gonna be starting off with the uh beginning of the presentation sounds good okay all right i am patricia trisha Ganya. KW Coastal Properties in Long Beach. And I'm Kim Jordan, Agent Services at KW Calabasas in Westside. Okay. And today we're talking about LinkedIn. All right, so I have a presentation set up. We're gonna start with that. And I will be going back and forth so that I can show you how to start setting up your LinkedIn. I have a like a dummy account that I'm starting from scratch to just show you how to do that. So let me go ahead and share my screen and get the presentation up here. All right, should be here. Okay, so this is the LinkedIn and then, okay, here we go. All right, can you see my um, KW Tech Lab screen? I can. I can. Okay, <laughs> all right, awesome. Okay, so everyone, if you have questions, put them in the comments section. And uh, we're relying on Facebook Live to look at our questions right now, okay? All right, so here's a fact. LinkedIn's internal search algorithm only finds profiles that rank as complete, and that equals 20 times the views. So, oops, sorry. So if you want to know how to make your profile complete. It's nine steps. You're going to add your industry, your company size, your website URL, description, logo, location, custom button, your first post, and hashtags. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change over to show you the screen that has the dummy account that I'm starting. I think I have to try this here and share this other oh i've got to stop my um presentation here i'm not used to doing it that way <laughs> okay so i'm going to exit the presentation i'm going to come up here to the dummy account okay so this is i'm just starting this as agent services here so here you want to be putting in a picture so you can upload your headshot if you don't have a headshot, make sure it's a good, clear, high quality picture of you. That's important because you want people in this industry, if someone has not met you, you want them to be able to recognize you. You wanna be recognizable in the picture. So it's uh, not really advantageous to use a picture that's really old. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead and add your profile picture here. Here's where you add your background picture, also called a cover photo or a banner. They do give you uh, some options that you can use and you can also upload your own. So you can upload something that is, um, I have some notes on the, the suggested uh, size is uh, 1,128 pixels by 191 pixels but you can do something like a listing that you've worked on, something that uh, brands you to your business. So I didn't think about this. Okay, so uh, imagery, here it is. Add your headshot, make sure it's high quality, uh, the background image, um, homes that you've worked on. Oh, make sure that if you are using a photograph that has somebody else's, it's someone's licensed photo, like somebody has on Google their little insignia that you find a picture that you like, you need to make sure that you have that showing uh, to give that person photo credit. Um, also getting permission is good. So you should contact that person. So try and use photos that are not, um, licensed, you can go to Pexels, is it? Yeah, Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S, and they have um, up and coming photographers, people who are just kind of doing photography as a hobby, and they've got beautiful pictures that you can use, and it's, they're license free. They're just trying to get exposure. So try uh, Pexels also. 
Okay, so I'm gonna come back to setting up the profile. We'll come back to um, the other things for like what what's the advantages and stuff. So um, part of setting up is you're also going to be filling out your contact information here. You can have your, uh, let's see, whether you're looking for a job on there, you can fill that out. Just drop down this add profile section. It gives you your steps that you go through. And then it does keep track for you. You'll have this bar for um, showing how far you've gotten in your setup. I thought it happened right here on the home page. Do you know where I see that, Kim? What's that? What's that? There's this little bar that will show you like how many steps away you are from being complete. It's probably because I oh. haven't uh, added much, but it'll, it'll give you these little indications. I'm gonna upload a photo and see if it'll start. Okay, I'm gonna just grab. Our photo from movie night. <laughs> By the way, we have uh, KW Coastal movie night this Saturday. Call front desk and we'll get you the address. <laughs> okay, so let me see if that. Oh, here it is. So you're going to get your um, strength right here. So right now it's saying I'm beginner because I only put the name and the profile picture. So as you add each thing, so I need to add my position and it'll each thing will show you. And then once you're done, you'll get complete here. So you want to get your profile to be complete. So the next thing is position. Let me drop down profile. Uh, let's see. Sorry, this looks different from mine, Kim, because this one is um, brand new. Let me yeah. click this edit. Okay. Okay, so here I would add my new position. So I grabbed that pencil for editing. And here I'm going to put agent services. And employment type and company. And usually, once you start typing it in, you uh, have something pop up there. And you want to let people know your location. Just don't put your personal address. Make sure you put an office address if you're going to put any address. Okay. Let's see, some of the other things are I'm just going to save that. Oh, start date. October 2018. Okay. Oh, and I want to put my industry. Industry also adds to um, how well, okay, so I got to the intermediate because I went ahead and put in my position. Sorry, I'm jumping around. Okay, so if I roll over my profile strength, Education is the next one. Oh, these are different topics now. Education, skills, and summary. So I'm going to follow the directions, add education, and I'm going to just put, just start typing and it usually brings up what you've got. Okay. So I'm gonna say, where am I? Oh, I'm gonna show my age. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I should have said, I just went to Cerritos College <laughs> just last year. <laughs> okay. But agents can also, you know, if they don't want to list college information, they can maybe put down certifications or other types of education, right? Yes, definitely. You can go ahead and... Um, you can put in uh, the real estate school that you went yeah. to and then put down the certificates that you earned. Right. Uh, you can do that. And the next one is skills, add five skills. Okay. Oh, goodness. <laughs> so I'm going to put add another skill. I'm going to put some basic ones here typing and 
data entry. Now, if I did early childhood education, should I say um, working with toddlers? <laughs> <laughs> data entry. Patience, <laughs> is that a skill? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Let's yeah. see. see if it allows it. I'm gonna try. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Okay, so Microsoft Office, that's a good one. Um, I don't know. Answer and you know, what's, what's interesting about all this is when you list some of these skills, you're actually uh, giving yourself keywords. So, you know, when people out there are doing searches, these are keywords that you're adding to, you know, that are in your profile that it will help you um, show up. Yeah, that's great. Okay, and I'm going to put technical support. Okay, add to profile. Okay. And so the last one to make this complete is the summary. So we're going to add a summary. Uh, It would, I would add something that's more specific to you and your brand and what makes you unique as a real estate agent. Uh, I'm just doing something really quick, but make sure you add something that's really gonna make you stand out. And so now I'm all set. And you know about that summary too, Patricia, I think it's great that you did that in the first person because even though some may have a lot of the same pictures um, that a resume would, it's not a resume. It's a little, it's it's more informal than that. It's where you can put uh, more about your personality and a little more flavor to it. So, you know, it doesn't have to be in third person. I think writing in first person allows you to be more genuine. Yeah, so that brings me back to um, the the slides that I worked on. So here's your best, because I did uh, touch on that in the next slide, I think it is. Best days and times to post based on analytics from Hootsuite. Hootsuite is um, a program that will broadcast on social media for you. It'll put out uh, postings for you. So they did some analytics and the following are the best days and times to post on LinkedIn for uh, B2B sites, which um, B2B would be uh, somebody who has something of value as far as like um, abilities, whereas B2C is more something that you're selling as a product. So you're, you're more selling yourself. And number one is Wednesdays and number two is Tuesdays. And the times kind of coincide with just before someone's going to start uh, their shift at work, like a break time, a lunch time, and then after work. These are times when they find people are going on to LinkedIn and interacting the most. That's interesting. I like the Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that? I thought it was interesting too. I would think, oh, you know, a weekend or uh, Friday, but uh Everyone's too busy, I guess, during those times. So um, LinkedIn has better lead generation than Facebook. When people engage on LinkedIn, they are more business-minded, looking to make purchases, find possible business partners, and they're searching for associates who can assist them in their goals. Facebook is more of a personal outreach with opinions, stories shared. Um, it's less business-related searches. So here you've got your stats showing uh, LinkedIn at number one for generating leads. And then I'm not sure what not sure is, but then there's Twitter <laughs> and there's Facebook. Okay. A little fact, research shows 94% more views on articles and posts that have images. So uh, try and always use images if you can. Other ways to make the most of your LinkedIn account, follow these suggestions to optimize your opportunities on LinkedIn. Put thought into your content. Social listening uh, helps you to learn what content is most engaging. So look at what your favorite or popular brands are doing for inspiration and take 
from that. Uh, give people a reason to follow and or share your posts. For example, contests garner a lot of attention as does polls and posing questions to your audience. Uh, that makes them want to give more feedback and interact more. Be consistent, try not to post just a couple of times, then you know, skip a few weeks or even months before posting again. Uh, respond to comments in a timely manner. People are more likely to converse with you and appreciate you when you respond to their comments, especially when it's a quick response. They feel like they're being heard. Uh, keep things polite if someone, because remember this is more a business oriented site versus Facebook, which is more personal. Um, if someone posts any type of inflammatory response in the comment section, consider deleting the comment. Keep things business-like versus personal. Okay, and here's a quote from the founder and CEO of Copy Blogger Media. LinkedIn, unlike Facebook and Twitter, is all about business. The mindset and intent are naturally more receptive to solving business problems than the kind of... Oh, socializing, it should have said, and sharing that happens elsewhere. I didn't edit that very well. Mm -hmm. With all of that in mind, remember there is no right way. Do what works for you. So, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing there and I'm gonna go ahead and go back. Actually, I should have just kept sharing. I'm gonna go back to that profile and open it up. Kim, if you want to, um, talk about certain specifics, I can have that uh, that dummy logo or that dummy account set up. Okay. And I can kind of walk through while you're pointing out things, unless you already have one opened up. No, I don't. Okay. It's yours. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll just uh, touch on a couple general things about LinkedIn versus Facebook. So um, one interesting thing about LinkedIn, in fact, some people say that LinkedIn today is like the Facebook of yesterday. And what that means is, as we all know, with this push for Facebook ads, you to see, uh, to have your um, post be seen, you is what they say. So, um, on LinkedIn, it's not quite that way. Uh, first of all, there is not as much competition on LinkedIn as there might be on Facebook. And by that, I mean that there are a lot of people that have LinkedIn as an account and are on LinkedIn, but they're not uh, posting, which just the bottom line for that is that there's less competition. There's a lot of people seeing um, posts from not that many people. So um, that's one great fact. The other thing is LinkedIn has less decay is what we call it. Decay refers to the amount of time that a particular post is in the feed. So, so hold on, so, keep, hold on, keep, yeah. you're, you're warbling a little bit. Can you start that sentence again? Oh yeah. Um, so on Facebook, there is a high rate of decay. And by that, we mean that a post that someone uh, posts in the morning may not be seen in the feed for very long. So for example, if Patricia were to post something in the morning, she might say, hey, did you see what I posted? And I would say, no, I didn't, because if I didn't hit it at the right time, it might be buried in the feed. Um, it doesn't stick around very long. But on LinkedIn, it's just the opposite. So oftentimes, I'll post something for our office, and a few days later, I'll go over on that uh, post. If I'm on my account or Minnie's account or something, I can see that post come up again. So it's not buried in the Instagram for a long time. That's what we need more. Well, then I'm then starting to start work again. again. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, and then the other uh, interesting thing is just that LinkedIn is, you know, a professional business platform. 
So, um, you know, the uh, I think they say that the income level, I don't know, Patricia, if you saw something about this in, in your research, but uh, most or over half of the people on LinkedIn make at least $80,000, which is obviously not the case on any other platform. So uh, it's the luxury pop properties that you're advertising or posting about and uh, maybe real estate investment information that you're sharing. Uh, you're getting it out to people of a higher income and uh, who might uh, be interested in those niches. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, now I can hear you. Okay. Uh, did you want to go over anything more with the um, with setting up their profile or? Yeah, I can. Um, so I'm gonna come back over here and I'm going to view my profile now. Remember for anyone coming in late, this is just a dummy profile that I was setting up so that you guys can see how it's done. It also gives you steps to get the most out of LinkedIn. So build your network, I'm gonna find connections. And this is gonna grab people who are, um, here's a, someone director of agent services for another Keller Williams. So I'm gonna go ahead and click connect there. Profile looks great. See who's viewing you when you're on the go. So you can get it, the app and you can work from your phone on LinkedIn. Stay connected that way, get notifications uh, that way. And uh, let's see. Another thing that I was reading about is your about is really important. And there was, let me see your dashboard. There's something else. I want to see if it shows it about um, your URL. You can go ahead and change your URL slug. Let me see if I can find it here. I think this is it. So that your URL isn't just this bunch of um, numbers up here. You can actually go ahead and Oh, uh, this is not it. This is, um, okay, here's the profile URL right here. Yeah. Oh, I clicked on it. <laughs> Sorry. Next time I'm going to let you take control of the computer. Yeah. Kim. <laughs> no, I think you were in the right spot. I think if you do click on that, you can edit it on this. You. Yeah. See up at the top, edit your custom. Yes, URL. thank you. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to click on the pencil and here I am going to change my custom URL and I'm going to put agent services 301 since that's my uh, market center number. Uh, something went wrong. Must contain three to uh, hundred letters or numbers. Please do not use spaces, symbols, or special characters. Okay. So even though it had the dashes in there, I'm just going to put no dashes and see if this will work. It may not take, oh, there it goes. No. Thank you, Kim, there we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna close out this. Okay, and I'm going to refresh and see if this is showing now with the URL slug up here. Okay. Okay. So up here now, see my URL slug agent services 301 doesn't keep the capital letters, but that's okay. That's better than having this, you know, conglomeration of numbers and letters that don't apply to you. Okay. So there was that, that I was wanting to point out and you can go ahead and in that same area, you can add your contact phone number, your address again, your, uh, oh, your, does your email, email address is the one I put in there. Your address, make sure you use your office address, um, especially if you're using this for business purposes. 
and you can add a birthday or not. You don't have to do that. Okay, let me just discard that. Okay, and so I'm gonna see about like making posts. Start a post, okay. So again, remember we talked about uh, pictures. Adding pictures is going to garner you a lot more attention. So I am going to select an image to share. We have book club coming up. So I want to promote book club. And then here I can talk about book club. Say book club is back. AW Coastal. Kim, are you guys uh, doing your book club again? Not yet. No. Not yet. Are you doing this in your courtyard? Uh, you know, we haven't worked out the logistics just yet. We do do it at five at night. So weather um, might come into play. Some people are asking us to also uh, have it on Zoom people who have, you know, um, immune suppressed systems that can't come but love to read and want to participate. So we're looking into how we can do that, how we can have discussion both in person and uh, mm -hmm. on the Zoom. So um, you want to add a hashtag. I'm going to go ahead and put, I always put KW Coastal Properties as our hashtag. And I'm going to put book club in case somebody's following that hashtag. Put book clubs since that one already exists. And I'm going to go ahead and post. So there we go. We've got our flyer with this month's book that is co hosted by Alice and Esmeralda. And if someone comments they like, Hopefully they'll share it. Then I want to respond, especially if they comment asking, you know, hey, is this going to be virtual? Is this going to be out in our courtyard? Uh, I can let them know. And so, yeah, I'm going to make sure that I am checking up on our Coastal Properties account more often. And that one I just searched. Because I wasn't aware that we had a page until recently. Kim, what is your office page? Do you guys have a, an office page on LinkedIn? Yeah, it's Keller Williams Calabasas. Okay. N not the estate. Yeah, that one. Got it. Okay. Okay, so here's uh, Calabasas. You've got your about, which is great. Always have that license number. That's an important thing that uh, I didn't touch on. Um, when you guys are doing social media, it's a really good idea to have your license number just to cover all compliance issues. And you can put that uh, in your bio. You can put that with your name. I think I actually added that to ours. Okay, there's... Keller Williams Real Estate. Okay, so do we have any questions on Facebook, Kim? No, we don't have any questions yet. Okay. Um, but one thing I, I just wanna mention, uh, besides the, the name of your account, underneath the account that, what they call the headline, that also is where you wanna put some key words because that will help the search engine finds you when people are doing searches. So that can actually be, I, I'm not sure of the character count, but it can be pretty long. Uh, you know, you don't have to make it long, but that headline right under the name of your account is, is important along with all those other pieces that Patricia talked about. Yeah, I was reading the most important points, um, put that your industry, of course, and put your location. Got that it. way people don't have to go searching around and wasting their time to find if um, that applies to what they're looking for. Right, right, yeah. Okay, um, let me just come back to my 
in here. Was there anything that I had brought up that anybody has questions on um, or anything that you wanted to add, Kim? I just kind of railed through it all. I don't think so. I think you covered quite a bit. Um, you know, I, I just think overall uh, LinkedIn sometimes gets underutilized. People still think of it as a place where you can do a job search or put your resume and it is all those things, but the social media piece of LinkedIn is really growing in popularity and it's great to be able to take advantage of that. Like we said, it's not quite as competitive as book and is definitely a, a professional business platform. So it's the right place to do it. Yeah. Should I talk a little bit about the groups now? Oh, yes. Okay. So, um, so I'll just talk a little bit about something that we don't talk much about when we when we refer to LinkedIn, and that's about creating groups and joining groups within LinkedIn. So, um, what are groups? Places where professionals of the same industry can share information. It's that simple. Uh, you can request to join groups uh, by just asking questions and. I'll show you and you can just uh, click the request button similar to what you would do on Facebook and you can request to join up to 20 groups at a time so uh, that means that you can have 20 pending uh, requests lingering out there and then once you're accepted to those groups you can apply to 20 more so some of the benefits of belonging to a group is um, it's a way to introduce yourself within a community of like-minded people. Uh, it's also a way to share your information about your business um, and gain information about specific interests. The nice thing about being a moderator, and I'll talk in a second about creating a group, but moderators have access to the members direct emails. So uh, that's a good way to network with people and you're not just sending the messages, you actually have access to their emails. And of course, depending on uh, the group, it's a great way to appear as an expert. You can share information and uh, you know, kind of establish yourself and your brand as an expert in a particular area. So basically it, it is a forum for discussion and for problem solving and for brand awareness. So I'm going to share my screen now. Can you see it, Patricia? Yes, I can see okay. it. Okay, never mind that I have so much open. <laughs> That's not supposed to happen. Oh my goodness gracious. Let me get out of this one. Okay. Can you still see my screen? I'm seeing the calendar right now. September. Okay, hang on. Okay, now can you see? Uh, yes. See, visit more LinkedIn products over okay. the right. Hang on one second. Let me rearrange my, my displays here. Okay. So this is my account and this is home. Um, there are a couple of ways that you can search for a group. You can come up here in the search bar and you can just type in the word group. And the groups that appear here are groups that, um, that, that LinkedIn thinks, according to the keywords in your profile, might be of interest to you. So that's going to be very broad. You can get, for example, if I have the word social media somewhere in my profile, I might get social media for real estate, or I might get a group that pertains to social media for interior designers, it, it, you never know. So a more specific way to do a search would be to actually put in a keyword. So now I put it in social media. Say that again, you got warbled again. Uh, 
Okay, so if I just am searching uh, by the word group, I'm going to get uh, all the groups something to do with what LinkedIn thinks I would be interested in uh, coming from the keywords in my profile. But if I want to do a more specific search, I can come up in the search uh, bar and put in a keyword, for example, social media. And then I would get the results that have more to do with social media, all kinds of social media that I could join. Now, um, I'm going to try to be more general and see something like animals. Let's see. I can click here, groups, and now I have lots of groups to choose from. And generally, as I mentioned, when you do click on a group, it will ask that you request to join. Sometimes there'll be a couple questions that you can answer, but uh, depending on how quick the matter is to get back to you, it will or we will not allow you to join that group. So that's how we do that. That's how you request to join um, a group. Now also, if I want to create my own group, I would come over here to groups. And here it says create a group. So Similarly to what Patricia was talking about, when you're setting up a profile, you're actually designing a profile for your group as well. So I'm not going to go through everything, but uh, a cover photo, you would need that. You would also want a profile picture. You would want a name for your group. Here you would put a description. It allows you 2,000 characters there. And you can also add the industry. You don't have to, but if you wanted to be more targeted, you could add an industry. Uh, the location and the group rules. And that's kind of important because you, at some point, if you're the moderator, you might be in a position where you have to remove someone from the group. And that could be based on uh, that person not following the rules. So you wanna make sure that you include here that it's a generous community that you're sharing information and that you don't want negative feedback or obscenities, etc. Because uh, LinkedIn will shut down groups if there's inappropriate uh, communications there. Now you have to choose if you want it to be listed or if you want it private. And uh, what, as far as permissions, uh, you require to be reviewed by the admin. So uh, can your members post anytime they want or do you want to review it first? These are decisions that you have to make there. And then you click create. And that's how simple it is to create the group. Um, now, what's interesting about the group is you actually have some benefits and some privileges, but there's also some responsibilities. So as I mentioned, anyone who wants to join the group would need to be approved by you. Also at any point, if you thought someone was inappropriate, you could remove a member from the group. Uh, it would also be a responsibility to give warnings if you thought someone was using a tone or certain verbiage that you, you think was within the group, you know, um, uh, <laughs> culture, then you uh, can give warnings and um, you would want to monitor the posts. Now, so this is more of a responsibility because not only do you want to monitor what other people are saying, but you also want to make sure that there's engagement and sometimes nurture that engagement. So you would want to, um, you know, acknowledge people who post, comment on what they post and uh, keep the flow of conversation open. So um, I think that's pretty much all you need to know about the groups, but I'm sure that you can um, figure out that in your industry, real estate, there's a lot of different uh, benefits that you can 
you can have by creating a group and inviting other professionals within LinkedIn to join that group. Um, it's not uncommon. I think I, I read somewhere that people can belong to as many as 30 groups. Uh, I think actually you can belong to as many groups as you want, but generally speaking, it's not uncomfortable to belong to up to about 30 groups. So um, that's kind of it for, for the groups. And then the last thing I'll just uh, bring to your attention, which again, I think is a feature that some people kind of forget about on LinkedIn. And this is something that you can't do on Facebook. So it's kind of interesting. Can you hear me, Patricia? Yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> I'm so I'm afraid that no one can hear me. Um, so when you uh, go to your home page and you can be lost here, something else that you can do is actually write an article. So in essence, this is like a blog. It's like having a blog on social media. It will appear in, in the feed. So it will look just like a post, but it gives you an opportunity to share a lot more information. And LinkedIn really likes when you write articles because the content of what you're writing is going to have the user stay on LinkedIn uh, for a long time. Really, when you talk about any social media platform, that's always the platform's goal is to keep users on their platform for as long as possible and not go to their platform. So if you were to put a link to your website, or maybe you have a video that you want to share and you put the link to YouTube in your post, LinkedIn is not going to rank that as high. When you do an article, which as I mentioned, is going to keep the user uh, on LinkedIn for a longer amount of time. So doing an article is very easy. Uh, I've done a couple for the office. Um, again, it's it's adding a picture and I loaded so that I can show you and Patricia, you'll recognize this. <laughs> it's our agent orientation. And this is just the, um, the image that I use when I send out invites to new agents, but it was the right size. So I'm showing you, but it is very easy to come up with this size. I know some people think like, I have no idea what size to put on LinkedIn. Well, if you go to your friend Canva and you click LinkedIn, uh, cover pages is one of the templates. That's the, one of the sizes. Uh, oh, LinkedIn banner is what they call it, not a cover page. So, um, you know, you, there's lots to choose from, or you can create your own. So that's not a problem. It's easy to, to uh, size that cover photo. Now with the headline, um, it's just in any article, you might have a title, and then you can start writing right here. And I think I um, may have started, yeah, I, I just was playing around with it. So I did a picture and I did a title, and you know, and here I can just start my my content. It's really easy to do, and you can have very long um, articles. I don't think that there's even a limit to how many you have mm -hmm. on an article. So you can get as in depth or as brief as you want to, and you know, and also you can use that post as um, as a link that you share on other platforms. So I will just show you as an example so that you can kind of see what it looks like. Uh, I recently helped many with so we'll go to now. That's a great idea. And yeah, you can. if I come down here to his activity and I click here, articles, so this is one that he wanted to do on the KW referral system. So this image I put together in Canva. And, and by the way, this is what the post would look like, you know, as it comes across the feed. So people would have to actually click on that title. And, and there's the article. And people have a chance to like it, to comment, to share. So, you know, it's really easy. 
and, and I'm sure you can think of a lot of different things to do with this article. Like I said, it's almost like a blog page, um, but it's on your social media and you're not driving anybody to an outside source like your website, uh, platform that chances are they're visiting on a pretty consistent basis. So that's it about the articles. I think we covered a lot, Patricia. Yeah, I think so too. And I don't see any questions still. Okay. So um, yeah, there's a little bit of a delay going to Facebook, so we can give it another minute if you guys have questions or um, favorite things about LinkedIn, you know, get a conversation started. Let us know. And that was great, Kim. I um, didn't realize about the articles. That's a great tool. Yeah. Well, as always, you can reach out to Patricia and I if you have questions about what you saw in this training or any other training, and we will help you out or be able to point you in the right direction get your questions answered. So. Mm -hmm. Thank right. you for joining thank you. us. Yeah, thanks for coming, everybody. Bye. <laughs>